Is COVID-19 hoarding part two on the way? As COVID-19 cases continue to increase here in the U.S., we should get ready for shoppers who want to once again stock up or hoard as we see the increased stress about food shortages and the economy flare up. On Monday, Kroger, for example, announced it will limit purchases of toilet paper, paper towels, disinfecting wipes, and hand soaps to two per customer. Then HEB also announced limits on the same items as Kroger, but also added rubbing alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, first aid, and cleaning gloves. And this comes at holiday time, a different kind of Thanksgiving and Christmas for sure, as people pare down the size of their family and friend gatherings and will be forced to most likely shift their menus just a bit. We are seeing the downsizing of everything, from the turkey itself, from an average of 22 pounds to about 12 to 13 pounds, to even the size of pumpkin pies. The good news is that many retailers have been preparing for this next round and have secured their supply chain and built up inventories, so it's unlikely we will again see empty shelves, but we should expect limits, and in some cases, higher prices. One example is that many of the smaller turkeys are fresh instead of frozen, and those sell at a higher cost. The number of people shopping online, either for delivery or curbside pickup, continues to increase. And according to the latest Experian Global Insights report, 60% of consumers have higher expectations of the digital experience than they did prior to COVID-19. They also found that 61% now order groceries or prepared foods online on a regular basis, a seven-point increase since July 2020. Retailers are faced with two important initiatives, controlling purchases and in-store social distancing as the hoarding begins and creating a better, more meaningful online shopping experience. The Experian survey also found that one in three consumers will only wait 30 seconds or less before abandoning an online banking transaction, which puts even more pressure on the grocery online space. Just how long will a shopper search on your platform for a gluten-free stuffing for that turkey? If their search results, as mine did, bring up stovetop stuffing mix as the number one selection, which, by the way, is the antithesis of gluten-free within reach wheat flour as its first ingredient, how much confidence did you just lose? And will that shopper decide to try another retailer site or just order from Amazon? which in seconds for me brought up dozens of gluten-free stuffing mixes. Across all of the businesses that Experian surveyed, only 24% said they are deliberately making changes to their digital customer journey. We have to do better than that. So what does hoarding have to do with digital? A lot. Some grocers, such as Alberts and Safeway, have been fast-tracking their digital platforms. And we should expect that this time around, we will not see a two or three day lead time for grocery orders to be delivered. Instacart, Ship, Favor, and other delivery services have all ramped up their workers, hundreds of thousands, to avoid that from happening this time. Grocery retailers are used to planning ahead for promotions and themed events. Thanksgiving just doesn't happen. Grocers have been planning for six months to make sure that this superfood holiday takes place as frictionless as possible from the turkey farm to the store to the consumer. But we must communicate better to the consumer this time around. They're still fearful of going into stores with plexiglass barriers where everyone is wearing a mask. 70% of them are still fearful of, according to the American Psychological Association, their basic needs not being met, the availability and the access of food. Many grocers already have communication plans in place to reassure their shoppers that there will be food on the shelves. We also need to ensure that we communicate that there may be shortages and ordering online may well alleviate much stress during an already very stressful time.